Okay, at the end of the last video, um, the day before yesterday, we started talking about elastic potential and potential energy. And it's E with a subscript E. Okay, we had already talked about potential energy, energy that's stored in an object. And we um, finished gravitational potential energy, which is the energy stored in an object as a result of someone doing work against gravity to lift an object. So if you lift an object up three meters, then you've done a certain amount of work on that object and it has gained energy, gravitational potential energy as a result, which you could find by doing MGH. So now we're going to look at energy stored in things that will stretch and compress. Usually these things are springs, but they could also be an elastic band. It could be your favorite pair of spandex um, running shorts or yoga pants or whatever they might be. Anything that can stretch, okay, will have elastic potential energy in it. How do we know? Remember the key to if something has potential energy is if you release it and it moves. So if you st stretch a spring out from its normal position, if this is its normal unstretched position, and you pull it out here and then release it, you know that as soon as you release it, it's going to go zooming back. So it has what, we're, what we call elastic potential energy. Now, what we were doing at the end of the last video was that we were talking about the fact that in order to stretch it, you need to apply some force F. And we came up with what are called Hooke's Laws, where uh, F is equal to Kx. This is the equation that tells us how much force we need to stretch a spring a certain distance x where K is called the spring constant. Spring constant. And the spring constant tells us about the stiffness of the spring. The bigger the K is, and the more the spring is like the shocks in my car. The smaller the K is, then the more the spring is like the, the uh, uh, spring in this click pin. right? And so the bigger the K is, the bigger the F, the more force I'm going to need to stretch it. Smaller the K is, the, small, the easier it's going to be to stretch, so the smaller the X. Uh, smaller the force. The X is, no, is the distance stretched or compressed. The distance stretched or compressed. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're pulling it out or pushing it in. In either case, it's going to have stored energy in it, right? Imagine that you compress a spring and hold it in, hold it in, hold it in, and as soon as you let it go, it's going to spring back, okay? Now, the spring is trying to put a force on itself to restore its shape, and so the equation for that one is F equals negative Kx. So this F is the spring, the, the, the force the spring is putting on itself. This F is the force we're putting on the spring to stretch it. The negative sense simply means they're in the opposite direction. And these are called Hooke's Law. Okay, so that's where the last video ended. And it ended there um, because we had yet to look at um, the elastic potential energy. So thinking about elastic potential energy, imagine that you had a graph. This will be F. This will be X. If you were to plot this, you would get a straight line. This, this force here is called a linear restoring force. Restoring because it's trying to get itself back into its original shape. Linear because as x gets bigger, f has to get bigger. Okay, So if we want to figure out the equation for elastic potential energy, remember w is equal to f delta d cos theta. But remember that we use this when this F is a constant force. Well, here this force isn't constant. It's changing. Down here, this force is some value 0. And up here, it's some value F. So we can use an average force. And the average of 0 plus F over 2 would be the average times delta D and the cos theta the f and the x, for us, it'll be us pulling it. They'll be in the same direction, so this will be 1. So we have w is equal to 1 half f 
and my delta d is the distance that I've stretched it. So we, it's really just x, okay? So the delta d becomes x. But remember our f is kx. So remember, whoops, put another m in there. f is equal to kx, so if I sub that in, then I get w is equal one-half brackets kx times x. So w is equal to one-half kx squared. And this is the equation for the change in elastic potential energy. Now technically, if it's change in, it really should be one-half kx final squared minus one-half kx initial squared. But just like in gravitational potential energy, usually initially it's not stretched. So this is usually always zero, and so the work done will be equal to the change in ener elastic potential energy, which will be one-half kxf squared. Okay, I could dot this if you want, and that's equal to the work done. Okay, so some of your homework tonight um, is going to be with this equation and Hooke's Law equation. Maybe first let's do an example, just because there's time on this clock. So an example would be a spring with a spring constant of 25 newtons per meter. So K is equal to 25 newtons per meter. Has 2.5 newtons of force, of force applied to it to stretch it. So F is equal to, really? So that one's 25 and this one's 2.5. And the question is, what's EE? Okay, what is EE equal to? So for E, to get EE, we need X. We can get X from our K and our F. So F equals KX. So X equals F divided by K. So 2.5 Newtons divided by 25 Newtons per meter. I will get an X of 0 0.1 yeah, uh, meters, okay? Now that I have that, now I can find my elastic potential energy. It's equal to 1 half kx squared. So it's equal to 1 half 25 newtons per meter times 0 0.1 meters squared. What gets squared? Just the 0.1. Okay, so it becomes 0 0.01. This is 12.5, and so this should become 0 0.125 joules, of course, because it's energy. Okay, so you see how the two of them are connected? Sometimes you'll need Hooke's Law equation to find either the K or the X and then put it in the elastic potential energy equation. The one other thing before um, this video ends that I want to just mention is, like, when I pull, like, uh, let me find a new sheet. When I have um, an object and I'm going to drop it, up here it has gravitational potential energy. And as it goes down, it loses gravitational potential energy. And just before it hits the ground, it won't have any gravitational potential energy, but it'll have a whole bunch of kinetic. So what's happening is the, it has gravitational potential at the top, it loses that and gains kinetic, okay? So it's not that the energy is being lost, assuming there's no friction. It's more that the gravitational potential is turning into the kinetic. The same is true if you have like a box on a spring. So right here, the, the spring isn't stretched. I'm going to pull it out to some point, I don't know, x equals like 2 meters or something. Out here, then, it has a whole ton of elastic potential energy. And as soon as I release it, it's going to begin to move inward. And as it begins to move inward, the x gets smaller, which means it loses the elastic potential energy. But what else is happening is that it's speeding up. So that elastic potential energy actually turns into kinetic. Okay? Uh, and if there's no friction, it should all become kinetic, by the time it loses all of its elastic potential energy, it should have gained an equal amount in kinetic. Okay, and we're going to use that as we move on now, first to efficiency and then to the conservation of energy. Next video.